Yeah. Call the reinforcements by Dimitri Greco. So, as you guys may know, I'm doing a project based around positive reinforcement, and um, some of the research and my actual anchor paper has been focused around verbal reinforcement, but I'm researching a new uh, type of reinforcement, which is a written reinforcement, which will be sent over the email to students. Now, that is one of the major gaps in my research, is that there hasn't been research on written um, positive reinforcement. So I'm going to see if there's um, disparity and there's differences between verbal reinforcement and positive reinforcement. Can you click, please? Um, so my approach and method is an actual quantitative uh, real experiment. I will be doing conducting a simple random sample, and a lot of what I'm doing is actually been um, I've learned from my AP statistics class. So a simple random sample is like every um, person in the group will have an equal opportunity of being selected. So I personally will not be selecting um, students. They will be numbered off um, by their code number. You know how you have an ID number 33373 is mine, for example. Um, I'm working with Ms. Leopold. So she has um, students from geometry to pre-calculus. Those students' numbers will be collected and there will be a random sample machine that will select say 50 students. And there'll be two treatment groups. One treatment group is gonna receive the emails, which is um, positive reinforcement, basically like after quizzes, kind of like motivating students. And the other group is just gonna be a control group so I can compare the differences. Now, this is a single blind test, which means that the students do not realize they are part of an experiment. Now, this will reduce bias and um, because students could have some change of behavior if they realize that they are part of an experiment. So the teacher will know that um, they are part of the experiment because I'm working with them, but the students are unaware. Um, the classes I'm working with, as I said, was math, and um, it's gonna range from geometry to pre-calculus, so hopefully ninth to 12th graders. And my controlled variables are, it's gonna be the same teacher. It's gonna be, um, there's gonna be the groups that I'm manipulating with the one variable, which is the email. Can I um, just turn it on? I think it might be off. No worries. If not, just hand it to me. It's cool. Thank you so much. Say hi to Arizona. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so this is my working research question. Well, not working, it's finalized. Um, how does positive reinforcement uh, motivation from teachers through email compliments after quizzes and before tests in math class ranging from geometry to pre-calculus affect student achievement in high school at the St. Paul American School? So, um, the question is pretty focused, I believe, that I'm focusing on just one math class because I think it's a good range because they have the quizzes and tests before. It's very structured, and uh, you know most of the other math classes follow the same structure. So how I'm analyzing the data, I'll be using a z-test with confidence intervals. So basically, um, one of the limitations I had going into the research project was I thought that I needed to gather, say, like. 200, 300 students, but by randomly selecting, say, 50 to 60 students, I can therefore um, interpret the population as a whole and have a confidence interval, which basically would be like I'm 95% confident that between this percentage and this percentage, this you know, it would affect it. Um, the how the positive reinforcements would affect student learning. So how will I actually be analyzing the results? So I will be looking at the mean change between the, comp uh, the control group, because obviously there will be some um, change in their grade levels from their quiz to their test. So I'm gonna see the difference between that change compared to the change in the actual variable and see if it's above or below the standard deviation of their mean. And the significance of my research project is that, as I said in the opening slide, the whole idea of written um, positive reinforcement hasn't been really studied. There's been multiple research projects ranging all the way back to 1972 on verbal reinforcement and how it affects you know, the thinking of um, the human brain, but there hasn't been written um, positive reinforcement. So my hypothesis is that written, that written, um, written positive reinforcement will not be as effective as um, verbal reinforcement. And I believe that in the case of just written verbal, written positive reinforcement, it will have no effect on the students at Singapore American School. Thank you. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, really quickly, did your method that you're following, did it also uh, emulate other experiments, real experiments that you've read about? 
Yeah, which ones? So there was this um, professor called DC, and he's kind of like the father of positive reinforcement. And he did a study at Rochester, University of Rochester, mm -hmm. and he did a simple random sample similar to me, um, where he took two sample groups and gave one verbal po positive reinforcement and, and um, analyzed the change. I just have one more question. Do you think that the academic level, geometry, I think, versus <coughs> calc, is it? Yeah. Do you think that the academic level demographically is going to matter? Uh, have you thought about that? I do not think it will matter in the case of this. Uh, I'll be because, sure. yeah. okay. No, I just, it'd be yeah. curious if, if it did matter. Yeah. I mean, when I'm doing my you know results and analyzing the results, I will break down my results into, say, different demographics, grade levels, and classes. Okay, okay that makes sense. Question. Um, why not do a double blind instead of single blind procedure? Well, that I, is partially. Can you just give context? Uh, double blind is where uh, I, both the students and Dimitri does not know who is getting the uh, or not. So therefore, he doesn't have a bias himself when he's looking at the data. I will not know personally who the person is. He'll, I'll just receive a number. So, so it is a double so blind. It is a double blind. Because if, if the teacher knows, it's fine. But if you don't know and the students don't know, then it's double blind, not single blind. But if the teacher wouldn't know, then it would be a double blind. Yeah, the teacher doesn't know. If I know either way, I'm the researcher. It doesn't really. I don't affect the outcome. Write that down. Though, the the given feedback, just to but yes, clarify, the reason. If you were asking a question like why the teacher wouldn't know, that's just partially because of limitations. I couldn't really conduct this experiment without you know working with the teacher, just because like it's difficult to get student grades and things like that. Any other questions? Yep, Erica. What type of like written positive reinforcement are you mm. using? Oh, it's an email. So I'm not actually going to give it to them. It's the the teacher. And hopefully, um, it's written in a way that it's all structured, so every student will get the same email, but it will be unique to them. Do you have an example of that? Yeah, but it's not here. It's okay, my, but you one of my friends journal. Yeah. So hypothetically, if there's like a blue student, and like they notice that they all got the same email, then they could notice that something weird is going on. That's true, and that's one of the limitations I'll have to address. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe just do one per class. One student, but then I need to, I need more, you know, subjects yeah. to actually. All right, really quick. To yeah, go ahead. Are you gonna send many email, but if you just one? Because wouldn't you need it over a long period of time to see the actual change? Because if you just send one email, it's gonna be over a long period of time to see the actual change. I'm going to send one email after a quiz before a test, and hopefully I'll get multiple of those. So they won't receive they won't receive multiple emails between those two assignments, mm -hmm. but rather I will assess multiple tests. And as, as, as I said before, I can, only, I can also analyze if there's a drop off, say if there's a peak of you know, positive reinforcement, and after that it might you know, numb out because you know, the student might tell it's not as special.